Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio, as presented by Salento Colour here at TIFF. Margarita, Barbara, firstly, um, it's the eve of the, the showing of the film here. How do you feel? Do you, get, do you still ever get nervous before showing the film to a new audience? Sure. It would be terrible not to be nervous. Then you are really out. Huh? You, if then it becomes a routine. It's, it's, it's part of the, the whole thing, to be very nervous and afterwards very relieved, or even still nervous. <laughs> yeah. It depends how the public reacts. Barbara, do you, are you, like you obviously, have you, do you watch yourself on film? Are you awkward about watching yourself on film? Does it bother you at all? Like, where do you fit into that equation? Mm, it doesn't bother me. I'm looking at me like a stranger. Yeah. But this movie I haven't seen really finished, so that's a bit nerve-wracking. Although I trust her, I saw a little bit of, was, was it a rough cut or? I don't know. Without, really without the real music and without real sound, so. I so should I hope that you would trust her after all this time. I mean, this yeah. is her sixth collaboration together. Yes. Obviously, like, two of her films won, you won the Best Actress Award at Cannes. Um, you know, the other one also. In Venice, Venice also, exactly. yeah. Exactly. No. In she Bavaria. Always, she's always <laughs> winning. <laughs> So I mean, therefore I take her because I know with her I always get it's, it's uh, a an award. <laughs> it's not only me, other actresses get to get awards with her too. But I mean what is it about this relationship, obviously you're coming back together for the sixth time, does it change? Is it constantly a changing relationship? Do you see each other outside of the movies or just on the projects you work on? No, we see each other outside when we can. Yeah, sure, yeah, we are friends, friends now. No, that it's uh, the the relationship is not changing. We are mm -hmm. friends, and so we are going on also with our life stories, not only with the mm -hmm. cinema stories. We are trusting each other also to to tell us uh, the terrible things, uh, but uh, the relationship in a in a film, sure, yeah. because it's for every part. It's it's totally another story and and so you have to read so many things mainly for for the three parts she did uh, on histori historical figures so uh, then we also uh, try to to find the best out of the the research now because first i'm reading everything and then she follows me yeah. and then she's reading even more than me and then she says look this speech is not so good i found a better one and, and she's right and then we put the better one in so we are intellectually uh, discussing not disputing but discussing and uh, but uh, we love each other always we are never how do you say? She never smack me. No, no. <laughs> she doesn't hit me. Not even for an effect. <laughs> to get to do something in a specific scene. No, never no, no, the, no, no. I, I already great. did it with other actors when they are not coming up with the right rage. No, you have to push them to be uh, when they are so too soft. No, then buff and then <laughs> ah, that. Uh, it happens, but, also, but it's the very, the very, very uh, last solution for me. But also with, right, with, right. with Hannah Arendt, it's a, it's a, it's a character that is really a thinker and a wordsmith. So how how hard was it to come up with a cinematical approach to that? <laughs> you saw the film. <laughs> so. That for you though, as a challenge when you get when you get that and you know that it's you know. But this is a person who, who yes. requires that intensity. Yeah. No. Therefore, I chose an actress which I, well, I can observe her thinking. I always said, I need an actress. You, I can really look at her and I believe that she has its intellectual power. And uh, for me, it's only Barbara who has it. Yeah. That's why I wear my glasses today, <laughs> to look more <laughs> intellectual. <laughs> no, but she, uh, it's not a film just about thinking, it's also uh, uh, she took a very emotional approach also to the person, so there is not just the no, thinking no, part. No, no, but, but that's the main part mm. because emotional uh, feelings, uh, that is very easy. Not very easy, but it's easier for a good actress. No? Ah, but for me, uh, the thinking is easier than the emotional part. Oh, 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 oh that's the first time <laughs> I hear it. But, uh, Oh, no. and, and you chose a very specific period of her life, the 60 to yes. 64, yes. in a global yes. context, obviously a lot going on, but also the Eichmann trials, like in that, that whole thing, but um, Vietnam War and everything was going on at the same time. What was it for you about this period that you f felt was the best window into this life? 
No, we first, because Pam Katz and me, we wrote the script, no, and we wrote it for, for several years, and we went on and we spoke about it. And in the, in the beginning, we thought we might do a, a real biopic, no? from, uh, not, not just from the, from the uh, birth to the death, but uh, a much longer period. Because it, w it is interesting, her life, to go uh, in 33, to flee from, from Germany, from the Nazis, to go to Paris, then to be in exile in Paris, and the Germans c are coming in and taking the, <coughs> the, the people who were coming there for, for as uh, asyl, no? for, ex for having a, a home. Uh, and they were put in internment camps. So as she says in the film, our, our enemies put us in concentration camps and our friends in internment camps. So that was a very, very uh, tough period for her to be in the internment. And then she went to, to she had the opportunity and the, the chance to get a visa for, for America. And then she went to America with her husband. So the, her life was much more than these four years which are, we are portraying. Yeah. But uh, we felt that when we will do the whole uh, the whole life, we had to jump from one period to the other and from one moment to the other, and to make a portrait of a person, uh, it's not this jumping from from one moment of life to 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 show her a little bit longer to go into her thinking into her how uh, 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 thought is developed and so on. And and the, the period of, of, of Eichmann, first that was her book with the most, uh, the biggest controversy, no? It was really a scandal in the time when it came out in the New Yorker. And, uh, and then it really deals with Germany. For us, Eichmann, that is a representative of, of a Nazi criminal. So uh, it, it's both, it's her thinking, it's philosophy, but it's also it has to do with Germany. Right, it's where she came up with that phrase, banality of evil, yes, that has yes. kind of rung over the years, uh, you know, many times over. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's also the, the aspect of filming in different countries. Did it feel different in, in, in each place when you're telling the story? Did it add, did it add to it? That was more in, in the research, when you are doing the research and you get the feeling for every country and for every time. It was also, we went back with flash, two flashbacks now, one in the, in the 20s in Germany and the other one in the 50s with Heidegger, not the both scenes with Heidegger. So, uh, yes, I think, was I it don't Logistically for you, was it challenging at all? Challenging yeah, the move, whole film. Yeah, yeah. To move the production. Around. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. That, that's the most challenging film I did, and um, I think uh, we did it on purpose, uh, on purpose in a classical way, because I heard some some voices they said it's old-fashioned, but I think to to give really this feeling of the time and of the of the discussion of the time and of this sharpness, you know. Um, you can't go around with a camera and, and you have to follow this way of thinking of her, no? And so you have to do that in a, in a simple way. Yeah, and I also thought for you, Barbara, working with Janet McTeer, Mary McCarthy at this specific moment was, you know, on the New York Times bestseller list and mm -hmm. probably at the height of her intellectual powers on a popular scale as well. So did you go back, did you read like a bunch of those letters that went between them? The yeah, I read the letters and I read um, what um, literature that um, McCarthy, I read the group and um, mainly her letters, yeah. And, and so what was, what was that like just in terms of just an acting exercise, working with obviously Janet's, you know, like you has been nominated for a bunch of awards, twice Oscar nominated. Is there, do you kind of relish that sparring opportunity? It was fun. It was fun from the first moment. It was really great working with her. I had the feeling it was, it was right away we clicked. I was lucky. <laughs> and also her liberal, like her, her position changed over time as well, Mary McCarthy. Yeah. So um, what about you in terms of your relationship with Hannah now? Like, um, you know, obviously there's schools named after her and things like that. Do you, do you find yourself having an affection for her or being contradictory in your feelings towards her? You know, it's both. Of course I have an affection. If you, you know, read so many things that a person wrote in her personal letters and all that, uh, 
But there are things that, um, you know, things she said that I am doubting or I'm critical about, definitely. I mean, the thing with her as well is that sometimes facts were more important, they say like facts were more important than, than opinion, you know, for her. And it seems like in our current political world, it's opinions that matter and whether yeah. they're factually correct as well. Well, I mean, her whole uh, discussion about private sphere and public space, uh, um, the discourse in that realm, I think that's something that's really exciting for us now, and especially in this election year, the things that she read come to mind, although I'm a very forgetful person. I mean, I read something and I do a part, and then after a while, I guess my body just releases it on my brain. And uh, But um, that, of course, comes up. But you know, there are things like, like when one of, uh, one of the things she said is, the sentence, who am I to judge, is a sentence she really didn't like. And that's a sentence I actually say to myself a lot. So she thought that was kind of a cowardice if you said that. Uh, I think it's more of a humbleness if you say that. So there are, you know, things that I, I would approach differently, certainly. Do you also feel like you become an advocate for that person because you end up traveling with the film for a little while afterwards and have to speak on that person's behalf, almost? Well, this is my first trip on behalf of this person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I certainly become an advocate in the sense, you know, that uh, uh, thinking and uh, discourse and a lot of things she said I find really worth looking at today. So, and I wouldn't have taken the part if I wouldn't have uh, thought that there is something important for us, you know, to take from that. So, so it's not difficult for me to be an advocate. It just means that I agree with her on every single thing she said. So does that mean that you've said no to Marguerite before? No, I would never say no. She <laughs> could offer me the telephone book and I would say yes. Very cool. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>